Welcome to the Film Junket Podcast. Junkie here. How are ya? On the 15th of fucking May here, guys. We're right in the middle of May, smack dab. Sorry, I don't know why that accent just came out of me, but it did, and I don't care. It just did. Um, what's going on, everybody? How you doing? Um, yeah, well, the, well, the funny thing is, I should say the 16th of fucking my May, because I'm not going to post this till tomorrow. But you guys know that I record this on Wednesday nights. At least I try to. I have a pretty good track record, I would say. I still need to see fighting with my family. Sorry, I have, uh, I play my theme on my, uh, my Mac computer, my iMac. And it always opens up with, uh, iTunes. And I, it sees, I see fighting with my family here. But I've heard good things. Heard good, heard good things. So... Ah, shit, I need to watch John Wick Part 2 because I'm seeing John Wick Part 3 tomorrow. Chapter 3, Dave. Get it right. I watched the first John Wick last night and, my God. I mean, as much as it is, uh, it's very difficult to watch the first 17 minutes, whatever it is, because it's so goddamn depressing. I mean, I'm surprised that that movie did as well as it did. Uh, Just on that first, like, you know, like, 18 minutes because i mean he's depressed he lost his wife and then he gets this fucking cute little adorable puppy beagle and then that thing gets killed (laughs) it's like god but then once that happens man it's on it's so goddamn good so i think after i'm done here yes um i'm going to put john wick chapter two on because uh, looking forward to it. I've seen some early reviews. People are just raving about it. They're, they're almost saying that it just hasn't lost a step. That it could be even better. It's crazy. I mean, all it takes is just, you know, you, you build a world. You don't give a fuck. It's all R-rated. And you just have some good fight choreography. And you have somebody uh, as awesome as Keanu Reeves at the helm. Of course, guys, I'm drinking my wine. My Pinot Noir. I've been on the Noir kick for so long. I think I might uh, try to change it up next week, you know. Try to drink the wine during the week, okay? The, you know, because it's like, if you look at some of the health stuff, you know, they, they talk about how it's, um, it can be healthy for you, like a glass of wine, you know, or three, whatever. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I'm going to start off the uh, podcast here, right? just getting right into it because... I know a lot of people are wondering, and there's a lot of uh, shit going on in the fandom, in the uh, the Snyder fandom, the DCEU fandom, which is, you know, never a dull moment. And it's just, yeah, there's a lot of face palming, a lot of just, you know, ugh, it's just funny how <laughs> the infighting, as everybody's calling it. Uh, I'm referring to uh, an article that was posted on uh, Real Anarchy, and that's R E E L, not 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 the real real. I'm talking about like a real, like a film reel. Anarchy. dot com from Mr. John Garza. That's right. He posted uh, an exclusive about something that he uh he interviewed somebody and uh basically the title says that uh here's what at&t really thinks about the snyder cut of the of justice league and uh stirred up a lot of emotions a lot of emotions because it just kind of just breaks it down breaks it down um and i've been telling you guys for fucking ever now and it's funny because I got a lot of messages and i appreciate those messages that i got on twitter saying that this is just shit that these guys have been talking about for a while, you know, that uh, <laughs> I've been talking about, that even John's been talking about, Steven, screenwriter, you know, just a lot of things that we've been talking about, you know, and uh, one of these days, me and Garza are going to do a podcast together, 
We've talked about it. He's got his own podcast. And, uh, yeah, we're going to start just uh, cross-pollinating our shit here, you know? That'll be <laughs> that'll be hot. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I've talked to the guy. And, uh, you know, he's a shit stirrer. He definitely does. He was doing a lot of that when, uh, you know, the Avengers Endgame trailer's coming out, comparing it. I mean, he was doing that ironically i guess you could say and then it was funny because then i when when the whole thing was like everybody saying that the russos copied bvs i started going crazy with it and i started doing it too and i got a lot of hate from both sides it, it, it's funny to it's it's funny to be a shit stirrer when you're doing it on both sides of the fandom it really is i mean that's that's the best you know instead of just doing it on one side you just kind of back up and go, well, I could do it on both very easily because both sides act the same. Okay? They do. Similar. You know, obviously you guys always know I'm a DC guy. Grew up with DC. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'll be the first to tell you that I, if I had to choose between which was a better movie, Batman or Superman or Avengers Endgame, Batman or Superman. <laughs> obviously. I mean, I know there's, there, I mean, they're both a treat. There, there's some fan service in both. I don't give a fuck. I hate how fan service is such, there's such a, um, there's such a, neg- a negativity to fan service. Just a bunch of fan service. I'm like, why the fuck do we watch these movies if there's not going to be any fan service? There's fan service in BBS. My God, the whole warehouse Batman fight sequence is total fan service. Jesus Christ. God, I can't watch that whole scene without a fucking boner. Yeah, that's right. I said it. Wonder Woman's entrance? My God. There's just a lot of good fan service in there. So, um, But, you know, when it, came, when it came to Endgame, yeah, there was just fan service after fan service after fan service. And I was just like, bring it. Who the fuck cares? You know, just do it. This is where it all led to after these 11 years, where the hell. This is what it all, yeah, just put it in there. Anyways, back to the article. Getting off topic. If you're new to my podcast, that's what I do. <laughs> yeah, I get off topic. I go on tangents, guys. You know, it's just, it sucks. But yeah, he basically breaks it down in like uh, little paragraphs. The, the quiet game, you know, talking about Justice League and just, you know, the pop culture relevance and everything. Uh, unseen Aquaman footage, which, yeah, Garza did, you know, some digging you know, on uh, VFX companies' websites, because they always have a reel, a hot reel or whatever they call it, and they'll put footage of what they've done. And sometimes you'll see footage that you haven't seen in the movie, but they'll they'll throw it up there anyways. Because, you know, it gets cut, it gets chopped off. It's whatever. And there's, like, Aquaman footage from Justice like <gasps> From, I forgot which one. But uh, then he call out, talks about AT&T and Warner Brothers. And this is what, um, this is a little conundrum right here, guys. The fact that AT&T now owns, well, pretty much is just in there. It even says right here, Justice League was in a precarious position. It was in the final stages of completion when AT&T was about to finalize its purchase purchase of the very film studio responsible for distribution. Yeah, that's the thing. And then it goes on to say, like, uh, you know, AT&T is a conglomerate concerned with one thing. Cha-ching! Profit. Money. Right there, guys. I have a $5 bill just sitting right here on my desk. That's what they want. They want a lot of those. Okay? And I've been screaming at you guys for a while, you know, when it comes to this fandom and what we should do. And as much as I like, I love everybody's enthusiasm and, you know, I've gotten hell for a lot of things. I might throw some jokes out there and that's just the way it is. I don't take a lot of things too seriously because once you start taking it too seriously, it's just, it's over. It's over, especially with my line of work, trying to be a voice, trying to constantly do videos and content and record podcasts and do live streams. I would go insane if I took everything so fucking serious. And there's a lot, there's people out there that do take it seriously. And then there's people that are just flat out fucking angry and they're a bunch of narcissists. And it's just, it's really sad. Uh, uh, but, um, and, and then, I don't know, it, it's all just weird because... You know, some of the people in this fandom have really loud voices, but that's all they have. That's all they do. And then they do certain things. They help with certain things, which is great, you know, charities and stuff like that. 
But then they, ex- some, I don't know, like I got the whole, I've told you about it, where I got in the whole heat of, I haven't contributed because I didn't take part in the letter campaign or the phone call campaign. And I'm like, that, yeah, I don't do that shit. To me, that doesn't seem, seems like me contributing to that is nothing, okay? I put a microphone and a camera in my face. That's me doing that. If I have any information to share with you guys or anything to talk about, this is what I do. You know, I use my voice. I'm an opinionated person. And I love it too because the past, uh, you know, couple of weeks I've gotten people saying like, yeah, you've been wrong before, man. You've been wrong. I'm going, "Uh, okay, what have I been wrong about? I literally would just ask. And I'll cop to it. Give me something I'm wrong about? Sure, cool. And guess what? I've been wrong before. I was wrong about Ben Affleck's Batman. Remember, I made a whole video of the reasons why Ben Affleck is still going to be Batman for a while. And that was last year. Eh, a pretty good reason because, you know, he loved the character. His kids loved that he was the character. I mean, he, the FedEx guy would show up. He'd say, like, hey, man, be the Joker. I'm Batman. My kids will love it. That was the number one thing. And I was like, yes. But then, you know, didn't happen. Now he's no longer Batman. I was wrong. I was wrong about Detective Pikachu. I thought that motherfucker was going to hit a billion dollars. I thought that thing was going to make well over $300 million worldwide <laughs> opening weekend but it didn't and when i watched the movie i kind of went ha huh, yeah this got really generic in very various parts there's things i like i can enjoy this movie ryan reynolds is a treat as the adorable pikachu but overall god damn this movie was a disappointment so yeah i guess people you know they came up with the idea when that's the fucking Pokemon game, mobile game, was a huge hit. Then they're like, oh my god, we gotta make a Pokemon movie. Not realizing it was gonna take about two years for it to get out there. Detective Pikachu, come on. I mean, I know that's a, a specific game. But it's just, you know, it's like, okay, cool. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, there's enjoyable parts, but it gets very generic. I love how people are like, Jesus Christ, why do people want to go see Endgame? And I'm like, yeah, it's because Endgame is 22 movies that ends the saga that kind of just paved the way for a whole new universe for the MCU. Yes, of course people are going to want to see it and see it again over Detective Pikachu. Sorry, it's just the way it is. I just, I just, I, I, I get it, guys. I get it. You don't want to see Disney and everything flourish so much because they own so much, and it's scary. I get it. But at the same time, I've seen Endgame twice. Do I plan on seeing Detective Pikachu again? No! <laughs> I just, you know? Don't sit there and fluff up a movie that's not that good. <laughs> if you like it, fine. Great. But I sometimes see people that fluff up other movies just to, and I just go, you're just doing it to spite Marvel Studios or Disney or whatever. I'm like, you realize that Aladdin is probably going to (laughs) flop? I mean, come on. Jesus Christ. I can't see that movie being that successful. I think Disney is banking on it to be a hit, a huge hit. But I don't see it happening, man, with the shit that's coming out of it. I mean, the only good thing is fucking what's-her-name playing Jasmine because she's so goddamn gorgeous. And he's got a beautiful voice. Other than that, uh, everybody else that's cast, miscast. <laughs> Jesus. She is, she is like the only reason why I am really want to see it. As much as I love Will Smith, guys. But that Prince Ali fucking clip that they showed, which Disney blocked my video... So I had to re-upload it with just a little smidget of the song, and then I had to cut it out completely. And I know I noticed in uh, the comments, too, where somebody was like, wow, Disney went after your video, huh, Dave? Or somebody said something like that, because, yeah, I have the like like three and a half seconds of like the beginning of the song, and then I had to cut it. And I was like, oh, hopefully I can get away with that, because when I put the entire one, whoo, yep, I got my video blocked 100%. The mouse! Blocking me with his big fucking gloved hand. Bastard. But come on, guys. Savoring that. 
Okay? I mean, it's just funny because it's like, ah, oh, yeah, oh, well, well, you know. Like I said, it's not a good look when DC fans are saying Endgame copied BVS. And some people go as far as, like, a complete exact copy. And I'm like, oh, my God. Did you even fucking watch any of the movies? And what's funny is people who are claiming that probably didn't fucking watch it. That's the thing. They didn't watch the movie. And it's like you can't make those claims without watching the fucking movie. You need context, guys. Jesus Christ. Context. For instance, um, my George Clooney video. When he said, uh, yeah, he, he said to Ben Affleck, because they both were uh, producers. Well, I mean, obviously Ben Affleck was doing everything on Argo, but George Clooney was a producer, and, and you know they talked about it. And he said that he told him, don't do it. And I saw people getting pissed about it. Only because they read the fucking title. And I'm getting so goddamn tired of that. I'm trying my best to not do that anymore. Because if you only read the title, you're being trapped by clickbaity fucking headlines. I listened to the podcast. It was a very, it was an awesome podcast to listen to. George Clooney was just talking about his entire career, the ups and downs. And everybody's like, why is George Clooney giving advice to Ben Affleck? I mean, he's the worst Batman. Um, Listen to what he had to fucking say before you pat yourself on the back with a quote tweet to your followers, you fucking asshole. Jesus. Like, he just went through a super bad experience with Batman and Robin, okay? He decided to don the cowl because he was like, fucking A, I'm kind of a name, but I need to get into, like, a big name, and Batman's gonna do it. Hell yeah. But all the weight went on fucking him and his bat nipples, (laughs) okay? Arnold Schwarzenegger was the big baddie, had some cheesy lines, got paid, like, $25 million dollars, which Clooney says was about 20 times more than I got paid. And everybody was like, gave him a pass because it's Arnold Schwarzenegger giving bad fucking Mr. Freeze puns. They didn't, they were like, ah, whatever. But he was like $25 million, whatever. George Clooney, that could have fucked up his career. So when he heard that Ben Affleck was thinking about Batman, he was like, hey man, You're like on a hot streak right now. You're making movies. Are you sure you want to do this? That's the context. He was like, don't do it. You're on a fuck. You're you're on a high right now, man. Especially after winning an Academy Award for Best Picture. Didn't get nominated because fucking the Academy is stupid like that. But everybody's like, fuck George Clooney. Oh, yeah. Why is he giving a fight? It's like, yeah, you didn't read the quote. Or you didn't listen to the podcast. Stop doing that, okay? Jesus Christ. Stop patting yourself on the back for your fucking Twitter followers. Jesus H. Christ. I was like, he was like, yeah, you gotta listen. Get some goddamn context. And it's funny because these people will be like, hey man, it's all about context. Yet they'll do that shit too. I'm like, okay, so you're a fucking hypocrite. Congratulations! Anyways, back to the the post for Real Anarchy. Yeah, guys. AT&T, they want money. They want a lot of money. They want to see numbers that Marvel Studios is seeing over there. Of course they do. And they were extremely happy with that uh, fish guy. With Aquaman. A billion dollars? Cool! Oh, we got a new superhero coming out. Shazam! That'll appeal. It's more family-oriented. Let's do this! Oh, shit. It's... Only made about a little over three hundred fifty million dollars, and of course, you uh, DC fans out there—I don't know if they even listen to this podcast. Probably not because they hate me. Um, they say, "Oh, it's a flop! It's a flop! It's a flop!" I'm like, no, it's not because it costs like eighty million dollars, eighty-five, ninety to make, and the rule is to times it by at least two. You know, if it exceeds that then guess what it's not a flop shazam is a success but it underperformed and in at&t's eyes it underperformed because they were hoping to at least they wanted it to be you know and i was hoping for it too like a 700 to 800 million dollar range and it's not there it's funny because you know i'm, I'm always in the middle 
these fucking these fucking dumbasses that have a weird box office logic of the whole thing. They come at me going like, "No, it's not successful." <laughs> I'm all for for a superhero that nobody knows. That's not too bad. You know, with an eighty million dollar budget to make three hundred and like sixty million dollars, that's not too bad. Uh, yeah, they wanted it to do better, and I'm gonna do a video about something commenting about that. So it's not a flop, but it's not a big time success. It's just the way it is, and that sucks. Um, he talks about that. You know, AT and T was put in a tough spot, and they're not happy. Yeah, I, I should re- I should kind of tell you guys that the. Guy, a source that he talked to. Well, let's just say I've talked to him too. <laughs> yeah, I've talked to him too. Um, good guy. Um, and yeah, that's where like a lot of this stuff. I'm uh, going. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, when it comes to the fandom, as he puts right here, you know, we've done some, you know, great things. The fandom has done great things. You know, charity stuff, raising money for suicide prevention. And everything. Uh, I, I I don't like it when the douchebags want to fucking you know grandstand and think like they're, you know, oh yeah, well look what I did. I helped start this thing and spread it around. It's like okay, yeah, no, don't, don't do that. It's not what this is about. But I think some people out there just they just want all the credit. And then you know, like I said, they these guys have come after me, saying that I haven't done shit. And I'm going, I've covered these movies since BVS was announced. My God, my very first video that I did, I talked about Henry Cavill being cast as fucking Superman in Man of Steel. That was before we knew how to pronounce his last name. I still have to react to that. That was going to be my 30,000. I'm going to wait for 35,000, guys. And I'm going to watch my very first Film Junkie video. It's going to be so cringy. So when I hit 35,000, because I was going to do it when I hit 30,000, but I just got lost. So look forward to that. Um, I'm just like, you know, and I backed up. I've tried to debunk. I've done all this stuff. You know, of course, I've changed my way a little bit. I realized after Justice League came out and all the bullshit behind it, you know, I felt cheesed. And I just started just thinking, you know, just thinking differently. I'm like, okay, i got to approach this a little different. I can't just be so one-sided, especially if I don't agree with everything, you know. Ah, uh, the hashtag, yeah. I mean, the hashtag's everywhere, but, you know, we're, you know, but he talks about moving the needle in the opposite way because they're annoyed. They're annoyed by this, guys. Uh, some people could say that's a good thing, but the thing is, numbers matter. And when you talk to some of these guys, I was talking to some of these guys today, especially because this article came out, and some of these guys just think, like, like the numbers are so high, and they're not. That's the thing. They're not. But at the same time, you know, and I'm not getting on Garza here, but, you know, what I also think about, too, is curiosity. Curiosity. If the Snyder Cut gets released, people who are not even supporting of it or even said it doesn't exist, they would go watch it. You don't think the Collider guys would go watch it? They would. Anybody who runs a fucking website would go watch that goddamn movie. Anyone who is shit on it and said, fuck you guys, it doesn't exist, would probably go watch it out of curiosity. So you do have to account for that, but I don't know how much that is. You can't quantify that number. You can quantify the Snyder Cut movement by analytics, which I've seen, and I'm sorry to say, folks, but the tweet... The tweets and, you know, oh yeah, someone did a Photoshop about Sonic and his design and they tweaked it to make it look like more like the video game. That tweet got more traction than any release of Snyder Cut fucking tweet out there. It got more engagements, retweets, and everything. And it just shows you right there. As soon as I saw those analytics, I went, okay, see, we're not as big as we fucking think we are. The infighting doesn't help. Um, the shitting on doesn't help. Garza right here talked to somebody who is in the biz, who has connections, who, like I said, I've talked to as well, and just gave him just information. 
It's facts. And I know people hate Ben Shapiro, but I, you know, and I'm, I don't agree with everything that fucking guy says either, but I love his, uh, his little tagline, facts don't care about your fucking feelings. I had the fucking because he's a little Jewish boy. He doesn't, he doesn't drop, drop F-bombs. He's a little pipsqueak who, who's all religious and it's all about, blah, 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 blah. God, I, when he gets on the religious stuff, I fucking, oh, I can't, I can't, I really can't. That guy. I mean, he. I, I. I listened to him a lot when it came to certain things, and I was cool. But then I realized, well, his whole shtick is just like this kind of thing, and then you know the religious stuff. Uh, but at the same time, he doesn't try to like put it on you. Like you should be like this and this, that, and this. And I'm like, yeah, but still. But I do like his little tag that he says, "Facts don't care about your feelings," and these are fucking facts, guys. They are facts, and I know some people don't want to hear this. And that's, that's the truth. I mean, I got that a lot today. Yeah, sources just come out of nowhere. And yeah, you can't name sources. That's what sucks. That's why my source, I just started to call him my guy. But at the same time, he wasn't anything like that. He just We just talked about shit. And then there were things he didn't want me to talk about. There were things he wanted me to talk about. Then there were things where he wanted me to release in secret and stuff. But that was it. Other than that, he's not like some source that's giving me information at a weekly basis. He's a busy dude. I don't. I try not to bug him, and I like the guy. I don't want to bug him. I don't want to constantly bug him and keep on asking him about Snyder cut stuff. Snyder, he's giving me enough, and I know for one one hundred percent that if there was going to be an announcement or a release sometime soon, (laughs) Comic Cons in two months, he would tell me. But it's not happening. You know? I was having a little debate with somebody who has a source as well. Who I hope is... I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt that he's not just lying to everybody. But he has a source that is full of shit. (laughs) Because a lot of the things that he's claimed to come out... I mean, he literally said there's going to be an announcement in January. And there's going to be a Snyder Cut trailer attached to Shazam. (sighs) <sighs> it's like, come on, man. Yeah, it's uh, it's really bad with all that. So, yeah, when it comes to this, uh, this was just an article breaking it down. Telephone operators, that was a big thing, too. And somebody even came at me, hey, man, when you were on your vodka stream and you had Zod Rider, you said it was a good idea. And then now you... And I was like, well, no, I said it was good at first because... When the phone calls first happened, they were like, we don't know what the hell you're talking about. And then it changed to, well, yeah, we get what you're talking about, but we haven't heard anything, so be patient, this, that, and this. And I went, okay, cool. You struck a chord. Now you're beating a dead horse. Now I think the phone calls should end. Unless you're, and Zod Rider was trying to get, he was trying to get Hamada. But, I mean, that's hard for a small podcast to do you can't really do that so you know he was trying to do that but it didn't happen and then right here it says you're not the decision maker nor do you know the inner workings of the studio tell them what they want to hear and treat it as you would a crank call apparently that's what warner brothers said i know there's a lot of people they're like a company wouldn't do that they would not mislead the fans and fucking tell them lies like that did you not hear about the fucking behind-the-scenes shit that happened with Justice League? And the actors going like, yeah, Joss Whedon's cool. <laughs> Sorry. Jesus Christ. Ben Affleck said, oh, it's the best. Yeah, he's like, he's almost like the best. Up- ben Affleck wanted to fucking walk out. He didn't want to do the reshoots. Are you kidding me? You saw these people's faces when they were promoting Justice League. You saw their mannerisms. Especially Ben Affleck. He was blowing smoke. I'm sure he wanted to be like, yeah, fuck everything that happened. Fuck Joss Whedon. I was here for Snyder. Snyder's movie was the shit. Fuck all you. No, but he straight up put on a happy face because he had to. And then I'm going like, yeah, so you think that 
these fucking operators that are making $17 an hour. Yeah. Oh yeah. They, they have to tell the truth. Are you kidding me? No. They're giving a script. And then most of the times I even saw a video today where all they said is like, they didn't know, they didn't know, they didn't know. But if something happens, don't worry. You know, no, eh. the phone calls need to end. It is beating a dead horse. I said that a month ago for fuck's sake. It's beating a dead horse now. It doesn't need to happen anymore. They told you what they told you what you wanted to hear. And everybody was saying like, oh, it's going to happen. There's going to be an announcement anytime soon. I'm like, no. When? Where? Comic-Con? No. But, hey, who knows what's going to happen? Do I want? If I had to pick, do I want? them to announce the Snyder Cut at the Com- uh, Comic-Con or not? Of course I would. And as you know what's funny? And this just shows everybody's mentality, everybody's head space, because I'm sitting here telling you, like, it's not going to happen. Not going to happen anytime soon. Definitely not going to happen at Comic-Con. But if the off chance, the slim chance that it did, oh, man, people would be like, see, see, and demand, like, apologies or demand this, that, and this. And I'm going, okay, you realize this is a win for me, right? <laughs> I'm like, if it gets announced, cool. I was wrong. And I am so happy that I'm wrong. Because guess what? They just announced the Snyder Cut. <laughs> Same thing with Garza. Everybody thinks Garza is a Snyder hater, doesn't want this to come out. No, he's just posting what he was told by this person. He's not a Snyder hater. I think he even said like Snyder is one of his top five favorite directors. But just because he's posting facts and posting shit that people don't want to hear, this is the reason why I don't full on like give everything that I've heard about the Snyder cut. Because some people would be disappointed. And I wonder if he ever got released, because there's some, you know, theories and suspicions like, oh, maybe this 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 character is in there. And this happens. This happens. They're going to be really disappointed when none of that shit happened. That was all just some fucking idiot on 4chan that said, hey, guess what? You know? <laughs> They're going to be really disappointed because you built it up too much in your fucking head. And that's a thing that people... I think that's that was my mistake with Detective Pikachu. I thought it was going to be something like, woo, this will be Roger Rabbit of 2010s. Or 2020s now, almost. And it ended up not being so much. Yeah. You know, you build it up too much in your head. You're just, gonna be, you're just setting yourself up for disappointment. I am really curious to see the people who were like, What? We didn't get that? We didn't get this? What the fuck? And turn on Snyder. I don't know. It's just dumb. Because, like I said, Garza, he's not... He's... He's not a he's not a hater. He's just posting the facts, man. They want to see numbers. They want to see numbers, and it's not big enough yet. The negativity is not there. Like these fucking ass. I mean, these fucking dumbasses that just think they talk shit about Warner Brothers. They want Warner Brothers to flop. They want them to bomb. They want all the movies to fucking flop and bomb and be destroyed. Yet they want Warner Brothers to release the Snyder Cut. What the fuck? I cannot understand. You're a sociopath if you think that. You are a fucking sociopath and a narcissist. You are a big time narcissist. Come at me. I don't give a fuck. I hope some of these fuckers listen to this. You are a fucking sociopathic narcissist. You need help. You want this company to fucking crash and burn for what they did, but then at the same time, you want them to release the movie that you want to see. I honestly don't think these guys want to actually... I don't think they actually want the Snyder Cut to be released because once it's released, they lose their voice. They lose their credibility. They lose everything. You know, I've said this before about, you know, equality and the feminism and stuff like that in 2019. Secretly, like they don't want. To, I mean, look at look at Alyssa Milano, <laughs> that crazy fucking bitch. My God, oh, I used to have such a crush on her, but my God, she is on a tear. Did you guys realize she did a sex strike this week? Sex strike because of uh, abortion laws that are being signed over. I think Alabama, 
sign abortion. They, they don't want abortion to happen and this, that, and this. So she was like, well, we're going to go on a sex strike. Okay? Put a chastity belt over your vagina, girls. And I'm going, do you not see the irony in this? Okay, you're trying to own the Republicans or conservatives, but this is what they want. They don't want people to have sex, so then you don't have abortions. It's such a weird argument because I am, uh, I am pro-choice. I am, to a point. I think after six weeks, if you haven't made up your damn mind, have the fucking baby, please. But within a week, two weeks, go for it. But if you haven't made your mind in like six weeks, because some states, I guess, are saying like after six weeks, that's when a heartbeat, you could see a heartbeat. Okay, that's when you fucking don't do it. To me, that's when you're fucking murdering something. Some people don't give a fuck. It's so weird because we should not. And I had an argument with this a long time ago because it's like they, the left spins it to where they think like, oh, yeah, they're just she, they're just trying to control women's reproductive rights. And I'm going, no, they just don't want you to kill something that's growing inside you. That's not cancer. You're looking at it as cancer. We're looking at it as a life. <laughs> yeah, there are like people on the left that are proud of their abortions. Uh, I think even what's her fucking tits from a uh, girl. I can't even remember her name right now. Was like, she wished she had an abortion. I'm like, I know girls who have had abortions. One of, it said, they said that it's the hardest decision they ever had to make in their lives. I have a friend who had an abortion Got pregnant again and couldn't do it because she didn't want to put herself through it. But now she's so happy that she didn't because she loves her kid to death. So fuck off with all... It's so fuck... Fuck you, Alyssa Milano. You were a stu... If you listen to her podcast when she talks about her daughter, I, I watched my daughter sleep and I weeped because of all the... She makes it sound like this country is so fucked up. And I'm like, really? You started making... A shit ton of money when you were seven. Who's the boss? And continued on to make so much. Ah, you're rich. Your daughter is well off. Your daughter doesn't give a shit. But she makes it sound like her daughter is being raised. As if we're in fucking Mad Max Fury Road. And she's going to be raised to be one of those chicks with the one main dude who's going to end up. Oh, good God. That's what they think. No, I don't think she actually thinks that. If you actually listen to Alyssa Milano, she talks like she did when she was doing about the poor kids or whatever, she did like one of the, those commercials. It wasn't like Sarah McLaughlin ish with the animals. I don't think it was animals. I think it was actual kids. You could see right through her bullshit. You could hear right through her bullshit. She is grandstanding because her career is going nowhere. She was after charmed. Her career was going nowhere. She's old news. Nobody gives a fuck. So she had to do this. It's total grandstanding. She doesn't really actually give a fuck. Because she's living in her fucking, I don't know, Bel Air mansion. Making it seem like this country is so horrible. While she's like living it up in her fucking ivory tower. Such bullshit. How did I get, how did I get on this? <laughs> oh yeah, because these people are sociopaths. Just like they're sociopaths within this movement. Because they don't actually want the Snyder Cut to come out. Because once the Snyder Cut comes out, what do they have else to fucking talk about 24-7? Nothing. They wouldn't have nothing. What would they move on to? Try to get Warner Brothers to rehire Zack Snyder to do the, the five super, Superman story arc? Five part arc? You could throw that shit way out. That That is never going to happen. The only way that could happen is in, like I said, comic book, graphic novel form, or maybe even animated form. That's the only way that that would happen. They would never... I mean, I've seen people saying, like, rehire Zack Snyder, rehire Ben Affleck. I'm like, no, these guys don't want to come back. I think Zack Snyder wants his cut to be released. Sure, 100% he does. But do you think he wants to come back and try to fucking do all that? No, I don't think after what he went through, losing a daughter, you know, in the middle of the process. Fuck no. But I think that's what, if the Snyder Cut got released, that's what these guys would jump onto next. Totally not even thinking about that. Because they're too busy thinking about themselves because they are narcissistic sociopaths. It is crazy, some of the shit that I see. It's fucking nuts, man. 
And I'm like, you guys are the reasons why this is hurting us. You know, the negativity is really bad. And everybody's thinking that, you know, Garza's fucking article here is negative, 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 negative. No, he's just posting the facts. He's just put like, hey, this is what's really happening in the real world, guys. You guys have put up like a little bubble. And guess what? <laughs> it's not the way it is. And I've told you guys this too. It's all about numbers. It's all about Warner Brothers seeing the numbers. And I've, you know, I'm, and it sucks too because there was going to be a point in time where, and I even said, I said, I even tweeted it out like, oh, you just wait because there was like actors you know, who were just coming out, like going, hey, fucking A, you know, I was part of this, you know, the guy who played Ares, and this, that, and this, I was gonna, I was gonna try to get an interview with these guys, there's other people trying to get interviews with the guys, and all of a sudden, they went radio silent, why, because Warner Brothers called them up and said, what the fuck are you doing, now all of a sudden, they were like, whoop, sorry, and they backed off, we were really hoping that we were gonna, like, get them to talk, but it didn't happen, there's nothing, it ended up being just nothing burgers, because Warner Brothers contacted him and said, hey. And that's the thing. is Warner Brothers is paying attention. And AT&T. Whatever. They are paying attention. But they're not seeing the big numbers that they need to see. Like I said, that Sonic the Hedgehog fucking tweet. If we could get a release of Snyder Cut that would go to the hundreds of thousands. Get to the millions. Then they'd be like, eh, okay, maybe. But it's just not there. I've seen the analytics. It's just not there. It's all about just spreading the word positively. But there's a lot of people that don't do it positively. And that's what sucks. <laughs> all right. Let's get some questions here. Okay. If you want to uh, ask a question for me, huh, just a uh, hashtag film junket podcast well, on Twitter. Sorry. I ate before it. Oh, man, I made a delicious uh, burger before this without a bun. That's right, guys. Like I said, you know, just you can make delicious food. Just ignore the sugars, the breads, and the grains. That's all you got to do. There's so much. It was two burger patties gourmet that I bought from uh, Stater Brothers Grocery Store. It was already pre, like, ready to go. They had all the stuff on it, you know, save me. But I still add a little bit to it, too. You know, two burger patties. I made an egg, put it right in the middle, put some cheese on top of it, put a pickle and some avocado right there. Bam. And just fucking, I didn't care how greasy my hands got, but I went, oh, yeah, I put some bacon in there, too. It's just pure, just protein, amino acids, good fats, you know. And no carbs, <laughs> no sugars. Anyways, guys, um, here we go. So, yeah, if you want to ask a question, just hashtag Film Junket Podcast. It's the easiest way to do it. Miguel M. asks, uh, looking forward to Godzilla King of the Monsters Day. What are you expecting from it? Personally, I'm super hyped. I love the first. Yeah, me too. Yeah, he loved the first Godzilla. Me too. And a lot of people were like, eh, yeah, I, mean, I saw on the reactions. Yeah, yeah. It's everything that Godzilla 2014 wasn't. I'm like, well, fuck off. Sorry that Gavin, what's his nuts? I don't remember. I, I always get confused. O'Connor or... He's a Gavin, right? <laughs> it's the guy who did... I don't even remember. Ah, shit. But he built it up. He teased you. Just like old school shit with Jaws and Jurassic Park, which is the same fucking director. He took a page out of Spielberg's book. Tease the monster. And then show some fucking cool shit at the end, which, yeah, the only thing, like, like I said, they fucked up on was killing Brian Cranston. But, Jesus Christ. But this one's going to be a total monster porn. So, yeah, I'm super hyped, man. Big time. Eric M. Blake, hard boiled. He's always on the uh, vodka streams, always ask, asking multiple questions. Yo, dog. Have you seen, have you, uh, have you any celebrity crushes? Just casual Batman. Could you answer the latter question? Oh, come on. I'll have to save that for a video, man. Can't answer as casual Batman. Of course I have celebrity crushes. You know, your Margot Robbie, your Natalie Portman's. You know, of course. Uh, he also asked you, Dave, I can't help noticing I was about the only one to point out that John 
Aaron Gaza's Garza's, sorry, source also said that Junkie X was 100% done. Did he really? Um, uh, as far as I know, okay, cool. But as far as I know, it's not on Snyder's cut. Sadly, so uh, yeah, that's that's as much as I know. I know it's not on the cut. It could be finished. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how far it got finished. I just know it's not right now on his cut. And then, of course, Stephen Colbert. Why does Donald Duck wear a towel when he comes out of the shower when he usually, when he doesn't usually wear pants? What are you, Chandler Bing? I think it was Friends, like, season three or four where Chandler points that out. So, sorry, Stephen. You're unoriginal. You ripped that off Friends. Even if you didn't mean to, I'm still going to say you did. <laughs> What? What is this? Okay, wait a minute. You have a twofer, but I don't see your other one. Okay, whatever. Uh, okay, why should uh, Gunn be nervous to tell Fahey he's directing Suicide Scott when he, is, when he was called back? Unless there's probably a verdict that says don't direct a DC movie? What do you think? Uh, I didn't read. I know uh, Gunn came out and he talked about the uh, firing and rehiring. Maybe he was nervous. I don't know. Just because... You know, they're two big conglomerates. I don't know. I don't think he should be. Maybe it's just in his head. I don't know. Uh, Karan Desai, painter of comics. Hey, man, do you enjoy scotch more or whiskey? Would you go for a uh, Glenn Fittich or a da Jack Daniels if you had to choose? Well, if I had to choose, I would choose scotch over Jack Daniels because it's scotch. I enjoy a scotch. Not often, but I will enjoy a scotch. I think the last time I enjoyed a scotch was uh, over uh, Christmas. Uh, my cousin's husband, who's a big drinker, he was like, I'm going to pour some scotch. And I was like, pour me one. And he had like the fucking ball cube, everything. Aged scotch. And it was delicious. Got a kick to it. Not a lot of people like it. My mom tried it. Ah! My brother tried it. Ah! But I was like, it's good. But I think I would, uh, if I had to choose, I would choose a Jameson whiskey over a scotch for sure. I just love Jameson. That's probably my favorite sipping alcohol right there. Straight out of the freezer. No ice. Neat. Pour it in a glass. It is so delicious. Man, I might have to give me a bottle. There might be a whiskey stream going on on Friday, guys. I don't know. I'm there. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, Gary Mall asks, Lex meeting Cheetah at the end of WW84, Slade visiting Manta at the end of Aquaman 2, Lex meeting Savannah at the end of Shazam 2, two bald guys in one room. Is it possible we could be the path that, I don't know, that sounds like a lot of uh, fantasy that I would jerk off to later, but uh, I just don't know what's going to happen with all that. It's so fucking up in the air. It sucks. Ferris, hype for Godzilla King of the Monsters. What's your thoughts on John Aaron Garza article and this whole situation? Well, you guys already heard it all. Like I said, I think me and Garza, like, we're going to do a podcast soon and talk. You know, we'll, we'll bring it up. You know, we, we agree with a lot of things. We just do. You know, he got to a point where the fandom is just like, what the fuck? And then he just wanted to post something that was like, hey, this is what really is going on, guys. So, yeah. Respect Darkseid. Ask anything about th that ridiculous James Charles situation. <laughs> you know what, guys? I actually dove into that. I did because my fr a friend of mine, because she walks, watches like makeup videos, started talking about it. And I remember seeing little things about it. Because there was like that pro Jared or whatever the hell his name is, that gamer dude who cheated on his wife and apparently was hitting on like underage girls on Snapchat or whatever. And then all of a sudden James Charles came about. I've never heard of either one of these people came about. And James Charles is a makeup artist dude, does a lot of makeup stuff, um, gay, like flamboyantly gay. And apparently his shtick is he loves to turn... Straight guy is gay. That's like his fetish. There's many videos where he talks about that. But at the same time, in videos 
that he has straight guys on, he makes them extremely uncomfortable, which is fucked up, but he gets a pass because he's gay. I mean, he flip-flop the situation and you have a straight dude and a girl there and the guy's making innuendo jokes and this, that, and this. Guess what? The guy's a predator, he's a pervert, and, you know, he should be locked up. But the fact that it's a gay guy doesn't matter. <laughs> he was getting a pass for a while, but then it was uncovered that a lot of, like, he was going after uh, dudes that had girlfriends Apparently, he was talking to underage guys, too. And now his career's probably uh, pretty much in jeopardy. And it's like, good. Okay? Because I watched the guy. I He's very unlikable. A pompous little fucking asshole who thinks he's the shit and thinks he could just turn any straight guy gay. And I'm sure it's happened. I've heard, you know, I've heard stories about that. Yeah, that does happen. He just has a fetish to do that. He has a little fetish, and guess what? It ended up fucking him in the ass, pardon the pun. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, it ended up fucking, yeah, you know, like, yeah, and he ruined his career. He's got a problem, but he's just got a fetish. And it's like, yeah, your fetish was not right. Your fetish hurt other people. So, sorry. Sorry, guy. You did it to yourself. All right, guys. I think that's all we got for uh, this week's podcast. I appreciate you guys clicking in. Like I said, if you uh, yeah, you want to ask me a question, just uh, hashtag Film Junket Podcast. doesn't always have to be on podcast night. You could just ask me whenever. But, uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys clicking in. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Um, subscribe to the SoundCloud that this is on, too, if you're listening on SoundCloud. Uh, follow me on all the social media stuff, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Support me on Patreon if you if you feel like being an awesome person like that. Um, and then, of course, I got shirts and stickers in the closet. All right, guys. Love you.